welcome to your practice. Today we're beginning in child's pose and we'll just begin to focus on our breath for a moment. So breathing in through the nose and maybe taking a deep breath out through the mouth. And when you feel ready, we'll just start to come into a natural breath that feels good to you. Maybe in through the nose and out through the nose. And we'll come up into a quadruped position, so on all fours. Sink the belly down, gaze forward into cow, and then round your back up, chin to chest, into cat. Moving back and forth from these two positions three to five times at your own pace. You can sync this with your breath, taking a breath in as you extend the front body and then a breath out as you extend the back body. And then coming to a neutral spine, we're going to begin to stretch just the right leg straight back and then the left arm straight forward without overextending into the low back. Really think about how far you can lengthen and reach. You can maybe even make a fist with that left hand. Bring the right knee and left hand down and let's switch. We'll go left leg straight out, right arm straight out. And again, thinking about how flat you can keep your back and how long you can reach through the leg and the arm. Switching back to the other side, lengthen and hold for five. Switch sides, lengthen and hold. Again, switch. and switch. Drawing that navel towards your spine, keep your back very flat. Again, switch. And switch. And switch. One more time. Switch. and then coming back to neutral. Let's walk our hands up a full handprint. So now our shoulders are more over our wrists, but our knees are slightly behind our hips. Elbows sweep the side of your body as your back stays neutral, lower your chest to the mat. Untuck your toes, hands slide by your rib cage and gently press up a little bit or a lot into a cobra and then wave back down. Elbow squeeze in, lift a little bit or a lot, and wave back down. One more time, cobra wave, inhale, lift, and exhale, lower. Prop up onto your elbows. Hanging out here in Sphinx Pose for just a moment, we're going to move onto our left elbow and come into a modified side plank variation. So. Our top leg is going to stretch out long as our bottom leg stays bent. Drive up through your waist on the left side, reach your right hand to the sky, and then maybe begin to lift the right leg up off the mat and lower back down. If this is too much, keep your foot still, but if you're with me, lift and lower. Gaze can come to the hand or to the floor or just stay neutral depending on what feels good to the neck, but we're just pulsing that leg up and down. A more advanced variation would be to have the bottom leg straight, but no pressure to go here, we're just getting warm. We're gonna do 10 taps total. And then lowering back down. So begin to just stretch that right arm overhead long, really arc up through the rib cage, feel a sideways stretch, and then sweep that right elbow back to the mat. We're coming back to center just for a moment and then rolling to our right elbow. So we'll take a modified side plank variation on our right side. So hand to the waist or maybe reaching straight up into the air if it feels good to you. And we'll begin to lift that top leg for one and lower two and lower three lower four and lower five six seven eight nine and ten and we'll lower our hip back to the mat 
start to sweep that left hand over your head, arc through the spine on a little sideways stretch. And then sweep that left elbow back to the mat, coming back onto our stomachs. Hold here in Sphinx Pose for just a moment. Pull your elbows back and traction your heart forward. Open through the throat. And then place hands on either side of the rib cage. Draw your core in. Knees stay down as you lift up into a modified plank. And then tuck your toes and sit back into Child's Pose. Spread your fingers wide. Find your breath. And then we'll gently come into Downward Facing Dog when you're ready. So just letting the shoulder blades glide into their appropriate position. Press through the webbing of the thumb and the forefinger. And then maybe just start to pedal the feet out walking in place. And then we'll still the feet, look to the top of the mat, and gently walk yourself to your fingertips. Inhale, slide your hands to your shins and find a halfway lift, long spine, and then exhale, gently forward fold. And then just grab opposite elbows, perhaps, and hang in ragdoll. Let the head be heavy. Feel free to stay still or maybe sway gently from side to side. Whatever feels good to your back, knees stay bent as much as they need to. Perhaps shake the head yes, shake it no, let the neck be soft. And then we'll release the hands, slowly roll up very intentionally one vertebra at a time, using the strength of your core to rise you up and protect your low back. We're going to do some segmental rolls. So opening up the chest, pull the shoulder blades back, and then curl and round from the neck first, and roll yourself one vertebra at a time, all the way back down into the, a forward fold. Again, knees stay soft, draw your navel back to your spine, slowly roll up one spinal segment at a time until you come to stand. Open up the chest, squeeze shoulders back, chin comes up, and then chin rolls towards chest, rolling you down gently towards the ground, almost like a Jefferson curl. And then curl and roll yourself right back up into standing. This time, we're going to begin to sweep our hands over our head high. Maybe palms even come to touch, gaze comes towards the ceiling or the sky, and then gently forward fold. This time we'll find a flat back, halfway lift, hands to shins or fingertips to the mat, and exhale, forward fold and step into plank pose. Knees or toes all the way to the mat. Untuck the toes, lift lower high cobra on your next breath in, and then as you exhale, wave your heart back to the earth. Tuck your toes, knees or toes, lift up and back, downward facing dog. Take a breath in and take a breath out. Step your big toes to touch and then sweep your gaze to the top of the mat. Walk, step or float forward to the top. Inhale, find halfway lift and then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep your hands over your head high, sun salutation, and then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, find a halfway lift, and exhale, plant your hands to the earth as you fold. Step back into plank pose, half or all the way down for your next vinyasa. Maybe upward facing dog here if it's in your practice. And exhale, rolling over the toes to downward facing dog. Big toes come to touch, prepare, walk, step, or float to the top of the mat. One more sun A, inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep your hands over your head high. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, find a halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands. Step into your next plank. Half or all the way down for your next vinyasa. Inhale, low high cobra or upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. This time, as we step our big toes to touch, float your right heel into the air, and then draw your knee towards your nose and step your right foot towards your right thumb. Gently sink your left knee to the earth and rise into a low lunge. Avoiding collapsing into the low back, really draw your tailbone down towards the earth. Feel a hip flexor stretch on the left side. Open the heart. 
and take a breath in and then take a breath out. As we exhale, start to sink into that left heel for a hamstring stretch on the right. Now this may be a little too aggressive, so feel free to keep your seat a little lifted if that feels too intense. Place your right foot back to the earth, hands either side of the foot, step gently into downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg high to the sky, exhale, knee to nose, step left foot to left thumb, sinking that right knee to the earth, rise into a low lunge. And that back foot is tucked, really stretching out the plantar fascia on that back foot. Again, don't collapse into the low back. Really think about drawing your tailbone down to protect your spine. Take one more breath in, and then as you exhale, place hands either edge of your left foot and sink back towards your right heel as you find a hamstring stretch on the left. Keep your hips squared. Find whatever height you need on that right hip if this is too much. And then we'll place left foot back to the mat gently and softly step into down dog, maybe hovering in that knee to, to nose position for a moment. Way forward to plank, take your next vinyasa, low high cobra or up for dog, and then exhale downward facing dog. Big toes come to touch, right heel high to the sky, draw right knee to your nose, step right foot to right thumb. Keep the back knee lifted this time, rise up into crescent lunge. Draw your tailbone down. Keep your gaze neutral. From here, we're moving to warrior two. So spin your left heel to the earth. Hands come to the front and the back end of your mat. Gaze over your middle finger. And then begin to take a reverse warrior, lightly placing the left hand on the back thigh, extend your right arm up and over your head. Come back to warrior two for just a moment. We're going into Trikonasana triangle pose. Extend the front leg, push the hips back gently, reaching forward and then placing the hand on the shin as you look towards your left hand as it reaches the sky. If it's available, you can reach towards the mat or even a block if that feels better to you. Keep that left rib long, so not arcing it up, not bowing up through the left rib cage. And then sweep your hands down to the mat as you square your hips forward. Begin to heel toe your right foot out to the edge of the mat. And we'll come into a lizard pose position on the hands. Feel a nice inner thigh stretch. You could stay here or maybe take a little half crow variation or come into Kundinyasana A, extending that leg out long. Holding here and hovering as the back foot flies and then walk, step, or float into your next vinyasa. Inhale, upward dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. Take a breath in and take a breath out. Big toes come to touch, left heel high to the sky. Draw knee to nose, hover for just a moment and step left foot to left thumb. Rise, crescent lunge, keeping the back knee up. Long through the spine, long through the heart. Take a few moments to breathe here. And then moving into warrior two, spin the right heel to the mat. Hands come long either ends of the mat. Gaze over the middle finger. And then we'll take a reverse warrior, gently reaching that right hand back to the back thigh as we reach the left arm overhead. We'll come back to warrior two for just a moment and extend the front leg out. We're gonna drive our hips back as we reach forward and then maybe placing our left hand on our shin as we look up to our right palm or maybe down onto the mat or a block. Again, we're keeping that right rib pushed down so not arcing up through the right rib. Draw your navel back towards your spine. And then as we spin our right hand back to the earth, we square the hips and heel toe the foot over to the left edge. Sink into a little elevated lizard stretch. You can stay here or maybe take a half crow variation or maybe Kundinyasana A, lifting the back heel off the mat. Hold for as long as you'd like. And then when you're ready, walk, step, or float into your next vinyasa. Inhale on your back bend. 
and exhale, floating to downward dog. And from here, we're moving into pigeon. So we're going to make some space in the hip by just lifting the right heel up high to the sky and then drawing the right knee through to the thumbs and opening up the hip. Now feel free to use blocks if you need to. Feel free just to come into a forward fold. If you'd like to take some form of king pigeon, you can reach back for that back leg with the right hand. Now I am not very flexible on this side, so as I'm trying to get into a king pigeon variation, it's just not happening on this side, and that's okay. I'm just gonna hold the foot and feel a quad stretch on my left leg. If this all feels way too intense, definitely feel free just to skip that. But when you're ready, we'll gently come into a forward fold of your choice and then lifting your head back up. So almost like we're just waving through. We're not going to hold this very long. So forward fold and then lift back up. So I'm tenting my fingertips on either edge of the mat. Forward fold and then lift back up. Tuck the back toes, step gently into down dog, shake that right leg out, and then maybe walk the feet in place. Spread fingers wide. We're going to repeat this on the left side. So left leg high, and then draw the knee between the thumbs. Make space in the hips. You can stay here or reach that left hand back for your right foot. That might be a great stretch for you. Or if you want to take some version of king pigeon, go for it. I can manage it on this side a little bit better. If you have full king pigeon, absolutely go for it. Uh, it's just not in my practice yet. <laughs> and whenever you're ready, we'll release that bind. And we'll just all come into our pigeon pose. So maybe keep those fingertips tinted as we just wave forward and then rise back up. And then wave forward and rise back up. We'll do one more of those, just kind of waving, moving very fluidly this morning. And then we'll tuck the back toes, place the palms down, step into down dog, maybe shake that left leg out a little bit, walk in place. You can even kind of rock your hips side to side, just whatever feels good to you. And we'll walk, step, or float into a seated position. And roll all the way back onto your back. Maybe one vertebra at a time. So walk your heels back towards your hips. You might even be able to touch your ankles with your hands. You can even clasp the hands if you have long arms and can make that reach. But we're gonna come up into a bridge pose wherever you are. Now, this may be hands by your side, hands clasped. You may even go into full wheel here if it's in your practice. So just take a moment to find a nice back bend of choice. Take a few breaths. And when you're ready, we'll gently come out of our back bend and roll all the way back down onto our back. So from here, we're moving into plow. So this can be knees to chest if this is not in your practice, or you can hold this little shoulder stand variation with the knees down. If you feel okay in the neck and the back, you can extend your feet back behind your head for full plow, but do not feel like you have to go here. This is, can be very intense on the neck and the back. Option to clasp hands if it feels good to the shoulders. And then kind of pull through your heels if that still feels okay. And then we'll place our hands to the small of our back and come into shoulder stand. And then we'll start to pike our body a little bit and really try to use the hands and the core to help assist you down, maybe rolling one vertebra down at a time like we did in standing earlier. Very slowly, and we'll stop wherever you are with legs up towards the sky. So just kind of shifting our hips very gently back and forth, just massaging our sacrum. We'll come into happy baby or knees to chest. Again, feel free to stay rocking side to side. And then we'll place our feet to touch and Supta Baddha Konasana, open up recline butterfly pose. 
Hands can rest where they feel most comfortable. You can stay there, or you can come out to full corpse pose for our Shavasana, our final rest. And then begin to just stretch arms and legs long, roll to the right side of your body, and we'll stay here for just a moment. Find gratitude for your practice, and then we'll come to easy seats. Eyes can remain closed, but we'll sweep our hands over our head high. Palms come to touch down over the third eye into our heart center. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. Thank you.